Today is September 8th, 2012, and I've got a little bit of material in the garage that needs to be cut into pieces. Six foot long bar stock that needs to be cut down into 15 inch lengths in order to use on the fixture that I manufactured last weekend. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm just so while the aluminum is cutting in the background, the second piece of bar stock I've cut here, the aluminum is cutting in the background, I figured I'd show the picture setup. Bandsaw is about to finish cutting the second piece of stock. And the way this is designed, you have to have two pieces of stock to run each part, or to run a batch of parts. Now, I figured I'd cover the setup of the fixture plate. The way I designed the fixture plate was that the I could touch the X0 on the inside of this pocket, and then the Y0 here, and then over here, so I could verify that the fixture was actually not skewed on the, uh, the table. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I've got the uh, wiggler set in the mill uh, spindle. I'm getting ready to run uh, that setup. The uh, fixture plate. Stuck is done being cut. The fixture plate is uh, is attached, but it's loose, so I can wiggle it around, reposition as necessary. So the fixture sitting on the table, bolted down with uh, two pieces of stock on it, waiting for the uh, clamps to go in place. I set the Z, uh, the, excuse me, the X0 and the Y0, uh, the X0 being the edge of this pocket, when, which in fact the machining model of this part has the, uh, the zero floating off the end of that. So that's setting the zero by the fixture. The, Z, the X0 by the fixture will uh, locate it properly on the stock. And then of course the, uh, the top of the, the uh, pocket here was used for the Y0. Now the, it was an iterative process to set the Y0 uh, checking both ends repeatedly. Um, wasn't too bad. It took me about five minutes total I think. Uh, just, to, just to be sure that I was uh, uh, satisfied with the positioning. Now what I'm doing is placing the stock in the uh, the pockets. I have uh, I want three eighths of an inch between the edge of the pocket and the material so I have two excuse me three one eighth inch thick parallels that are stuck in the uh, in the gap uh, to set the position. So I set one drop the stock in to the camera work here no tripod and I drop the other one in and then I'm satisfied with the uh, with the location of the stock at that point. And that's it. All I have to do now is uh, bolt it down using the Mighty Bite clamps. So the Mighty Bite clamps didn't work exactly as intended within the design of this fixture. One of the challenges is I was expecting the clamps to actually push down on the part more than just out. Well, they only push out. And as a result, the um, uh, the material wants to lift up out of the the uh, fixture because the the uh, point where it contacts the fixture on the outside is low, and this is contacting relatively high. So what I've done is attempted a band aid by clamping down the um, the material first with some standard uh, milling clamps, and then I'm going to tighten up the mighty bite fixtures and then remove the milling clamps and see if the uh, the material stays in place and it's just a matter of not being able to transition uh, to the hold down uh, position with these clamps so uh, so no matter how I played it I couldn't get the mighty bite fixtures to hold the material down in the fixture the way I designed the mighty bite hold down clamps to hold the material in the fixture the way I designed so I have to use these uh, standard milling clamps, which maybe I should have used in the first place, but I was looking for something that had a little bit of a cleaner approach. Now, what you're seeing here in the foreground is sort of a uh, hack modification, if you will. What I did uh, is disconnect the coolant hose from the end of the manifold here, and then just run the, uh, the hose itself around to where the nozzle is, so I'm using the, uh, the, the stock coolant nozzle as a support to direct the uh, coolant flow. The reason being is I can only get about 52 gallons per hour or so out of the end of the nozzle, whereas this thing uh, flows 100 or so gallons per hour. So because I'm doing really deep pockets and I'm using 
uh, a roughing end mill which gives very heavy chips with small surface area, I figured I'd better clean out the pocket pretty well. So I decided to make that change. So this is a temporary solution until I get a better, uh, a better approach to this, which would involve uh, a different cooling uh, coolant system entirely, different pump, probably a different bigger, uh, probably a different reservoir, and so on. The test run of the code is now complete, and I'm getting ready to start the cycle to see how this goes. Here we go. found out there was a limit to the length of hose, so I disconnected my uh, clamp there since it wasn't really needed for this operation. Here we go. Here's a problem that I anticipated but didn't really work out a solution to. That's the pockets being filled with chips from previous operations. Now, I still have the roughing end mill in there, but I'm turning, uh, I'm switching to a uh, mill that is going to be an end mill that is going to be used to finish the pocket, put a better finish, surface finish on the inside. And I'm not certain that the coolant flow as it approaches will be enough to clean it out before the uh, tool gets in to make a pocket. So to clean the chips off, I tried compressed air initially and that made an enormous mess very, very quickly uh, because of the volume of the chips and how sticky they were. Um, instead, I just, instead of having to move the head of the mill around, I just used that thing like a hose and hose it to switch the uh, pump to the on manually and then used it to, to spray out each one. Didn't move the, uh, the head of the mill or the table of the mill anywhere. So I've got some scatter problems with the uh, finishing operation on the wall of the pocket. Right here. And then there'll be another one around on the other side, 180 degrees from that, but at the second cut, it's not a problem for some reason. 
it doesn't make nearly as much noise. Oh, that sounded dead. That's a good thing. So as long as I'm not getting cool pull out, I think I'm okay with it. Surface finish, when I checked it on the first pocket that that did, made that sound. Didn't seem to make any noise. Sorry, the, the surface finish wasn't in bad shape. Looked good. So I guess I'll just address this now, maybe change the depth of cut uh, for production. with most chamfering operation that was uh... so the top chamfer is done looking pretty good surface finisher on the side this is the range where there was chatter uh... chatter sounds come from the tool but anything really all that obvious as to where there's any surface finish problems so I hit start and nothing broke barely make up the sound of cutting. It's an eight flute cutter. I'm running at a half a, or a quarter of the RPM I normally would have run with a two flute cutter. Everything seems to be going okay so far. So the first batch of step one parts are complete. We're looking at the front side right now. Tell the front side because they have these notches in them. I'll do some dimensional verification to ensure that they're all at the right size. But one of the things I'm most thrilled by is how nice the chamfer looks on the back side of it. Now remember, this is all done in one operation. So I did the bore, the chamfer on the top side, chamfer on the bottom side. 